If you are someone who is preparing for GATE, then you can utilize this time efficiently to prepare for the examination. As you know, due to coronavirus outbreak, there is nationwide lockdown in our country and we are allowed to do only some restricted activities. Maybe you are facing some difficulties due to these restrictions. But always be positive and take this as an opportunity to give more time to your gate exam preparation. One thing you should keep in mind, it takes a lot of efforts to prepare for gate exam. But along with hard work, knowing some tips and tricks can only benefit your preparation. Remember, cracking gate is not about hard work but about doing your best in the examination hall. So what you need to do is you need to master some tactics to tackle it confidently. Keep watching this session with me on Crack Easy, the place to learn how to crack easy exams. Today I have brought you detailed solution of all previous year gate questions on superposition theorem. Please do watch it till the end since I'm going to share not only the answers but also all concepts, tips and tricks related to each question. Hope all set to get started. Let me now take you to first question. It's from gate 1998. Superposition theorem is not applicable to networks containing option A non-linear elements, option B dependent voltage sources, option c dependent current sources and option d transformers now who can tell me the statement of superposition theorem in fact we already had a detailed discussion on this theorem in our session all about superposition theorem the link of that video is given in description box if you don't know what is superposition theorem then it will be tough for you to understand the questions discussed here so I highly recommend please do watch that video first and start solving questions. Now let's have a quick review of superposition theorem. The principle of superposition states that the response in a linear circuit having more than one independent source can be obtained by adding the responses coerced by separate independent sources acting alone, which means Superposition theorem is applicable only to linear circuits having independent sources, linear dependent sources, linear transformers, and linear positive elements such as resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Now you look at the options given. What would be our answer? Our answer would be option A. That is, superposition theorem is not applicable to networks containing non-linear elements. Hope it is clear. Moving on to next question. It's from gate 1999. For the network shown, evaluate the current I flowing through the 2 ohm resistor using superposition theorem. You can see the network here. Let us first analyze this network. Here we have two resistors, one 2 ohm, one 4 ohm and one inductor, two independent current sources, 10 angle 20 and 10 angle 0. The interesting fact is that the network is given frequency domain, which means our analysis should be done in frequency domain. In fact, the topic frequency domain analysis of networks is broad. So, here we'll be discussing only part of it which is required to solve this particular question. Frequency domain analysis. We have a concept called impedance, which is a generalized circuit element that can be a resistor, capacitor, or inductor. The impedance is a vector quantity which has both magnitude and direction, and it depends on frequency. Now I'll tell you the impedance value corresponding to each network element such as resistor, capacitor and inductor. Suppose we have a R ohm resistor. The corresponding impedance value is R ohm itself. On the other hand, the impedance value corresponding to a C farad capacitor is 1 by J omega C where omega is the angular frequency. Finally, a L-Henry inductor 
gives an impedance j omega l where omega is the angular frequency all right apart from that frequency domain analysis of networks is based on complex numbers there are two forms to represent a complex number they are rectangular form and polar form in rectangular form a complex number will be in the form a plus gp where a is the real part and b is the imaginary part on the other hand in polar form it will be in the form r angle theta where r is the magnitude and theta is the angle let us now come back to our question here we are asked to find out the current i through this two ohm resistor using superposition theorem according to superposition theorem the response in a linear circuit can be obtained by adding the responses caused by separate independent sources acting along the response mentioned here may be a current or voltage now let me ask you a question do you know how to calculate the response caused by a particular independent source acting along any idea all right for calculating the response caused by a particular independent source we are supposed to replace all other independent voltage sources in the network with the short circuits and all other independent current sources in the network with open circuits then calculate desired quantity now you look at this network you can see two independent current sources 10 angle 0 and 10 angle 20 degree so what we are going to do is we are going to calculate two quantities i1 and i2 i1 is the current through this 2 ohm when this source 10 angle 0 is acting along and i2 is the current through 2 ohm when 10 angle 20 source is acting along finally our desired quantity i can be obtained by adding these i1 and i2 got it let us first focus on this source 10 angle 0 that is we are going to find out current through this 2 ohm when this source is acting along and for that we are supposed to replace 10 angle 20 degree source with this open circuit after doing that we get a circuit like this i1 is marked as current through this 2 ohm when 10 angle 0 degree is acting along now can anyone tell me how can we calculate this current i1 what will be the most appropriate method You can see at this point the current 10 angle 0 is getting divided between two parallel paths. So we can use current division rule to calculate I1. Hope you already aware of what is current division rule. According to current division rule this I1 can be expressed as 10 angle 0 into J8 by J8 plus 2 plus 4. That is I1 is equal to 10 into J8 by J8 plus 6. and this expression can be reduced to 48j plus 64 got it our next task is to calculate i2 which is nothing but current through this 2 ohm when this source 10 angle 20 is acting along and for calculating that we are supposed to replace 10 angle 0 source with a open circuit after doing that we get a circuit like this I2 is marked as current through this 2 ohm from left to right here also we can use current division rule to calculate I2 based on current division rule I2 can be expressed as minus 10 angle 20 into 4 by 4 plus 2 plus J8 why there is a negative sign here I2 is marked as current through 2 ohm from left to right and our source current 10 angle 20 degree will be reaching the resistor 2 ohm in opposite direction that's why there is a negative sign thus we get i2 is equal to minus 10 angle 20 into 4 by 4 plus 2 plus j8 which can be reduced to minus 3.349 minus 2.18 j thus we calculated two currents i1 and i2 finally our desired quantity i can be calculated as i1 plus i2 that is equal to 60.65 plus 50.18 j or 78.7 angle 39.6 degree so here we are at the end please try to practice more questions on superposition theorem it will definitely help you to perform better in upcoming gate exam 
Thank you for staying with me till the end. I will see you soon in another session on Crack Easy, the place to learn how to crack easy exams. Thanks for watching. Thank you.